Hi there, this is Hans Forschner with Nafka Engineering. A quick introduction into the IRIS software. The IRIS software is a 3D impulse response measuring and visualization system. It allows you to collect uh, impulse responses in a, in a room, uh, either through a uh, speaker or through a PA system. And um, what I will show here in this uh, video is how to uh, review the uh, result data or the measured data. So if you downloaded the IRIS uh, demo software, uh, you install the software and then at this point we go file, open, open project and we open a project. So in this folder you should find uh, Oakland Town Hall project. So here we have Oakland Town Hall IRIS file. So we open that up. And it opens up uh, the results for for free measurement locations inside the uh, this hall, this town hall. And um, so what we see here is uh, the iris 3D plot. So the hedgehog right here. We can uh, look at it, uh, rotate um, in different axes. We can look at that in the, like in the 3D plane and change it with the mouse and rotate the whole thing. Uh, if you look at the hedgehog, the uh, lines are color-coded. The color coding, um, you can see down here, is uh, represents certain time arrivals of sound rays. So um, red is from 0 to 2 milliseconds, uh, orange 20, uh, 2 to 20, green 20 to 80, and 80 to 200. That's like a dark blue and a light blue, everything beyond 200 milliseconds. So the uh, signal that was measured was a 30-second sw swept sign. Iris uh, will do a back integration to uh, calculate the uh, spectrogram here, or, or this uh, 3D intensity vectors. Uh, we have different filters here on the right-hand side, where we can look at it um, from a broadband standpoint. So all the uh, octaves are basically added up, or we can also look at the specific octave bands, in this case starting at 500 hertz to 4 kilohertz. Then uh, another filter is kind of resolution uh, that basically will allow us to do a, a cursory, cursory uh, resolution of these pies. So right now we have uh, two millisecond uh, pies here and one of the things we can do at this point we can look at the specific pies for example. I can uh, hit, hold the control button and I can select, um, for example, a, uh, a peak. So this one is, for example, this very first peak uh, the, uh, from 0 to 2 milliseconds. There's another one right here. So let me zoom out here. So this one is this peak right here. Uh, so with this, you can basically look around and get an idea of where the sound came from at that instant of time. So we can also go and uh, peak, uh, or pick a, a time sequence in the time domain, so on the wavefront. So we can uh, pick this one. Um, in terms of the waveform uh, here, or the time domain, we can also look at it in terms of a pressure form. So we can go at each of these peaks and uh, get where the uh, signals are coming from. So like this one is, is right here, this peak. So this the selected vector, you see kind of the magnitude from the original peak. So it's 11 dB down, has an azimuth of 57 degrees and an elevation of 9.5. And uh, so here, this is the original peak at uh, negative 4 degrees and 7.4 degrees. So that's one way of uh, looking at the results. Um, we can change also the, uh, the range terms of uh, dB down from the original uh, main signal. And then we can also look at the time intervals and uh, select different time ranges. So here this is for music with again these time intervals from 0 to 2 milliseconds, 2 to 20, 20 to 80 and so on. For speech we have uh, slightly different uh, ranges. Same uh, direct contribution from 0 to 2 milliseconds but then uh, for speech, uh, basically this green area starts from 2 to 50, and then 50 to 8, and everything beyond 8. 
and then for studios, uh, so here we have uh, a red and orange range. So here, uh, everything up to 15 millisecond time decays. Um, one of the next versions of Iris uh, will have uh, these time ranges or time intervals uh, selectable by the users. Right now, those are hard coded into the program. Um, so we can look at uh, different uh, measurements. So here, this is the location uh, source 1 a receiver 4 here is source 1 and receiver 6 so it's reloading the data and actually recalculating everything so here we have a little bit of a different look at this so if I look at this here that just means that you probably don't have much of uh, reflections from behind a lot of reflections from the ceilings and uh, maybe a few reflections uh, or early reflections from the ground here. And here the uh, location uh, source 1, receiver 8. And uh, this one has a lot of uh, like late delays uh, going from the front and uh, above and below, not as much from the back. And uh, the first incoming uh, direct sound, that's, uh, so this must be a uh, receptor that's uh, actually a little bit elevated. And uh, so the first two direct contribution are from negative 13 degrees, so this must be an elevated location. And um, we can zoom in here a little bit. So these are kind of some late arrivals uh, somewhere around uh, yeah four or six milliseconds after the direct uh, arrival here so there are other settings here uh, here uh, for each of these locations we can see the results um, in terms of the edt t20 t30 some of these other acoustic parameters here in terms of like the, the mid-range we can look at all the parameters on an octave uh, with octave resolution right here. We can copy the data and then basically paste it directly into Excel or other uh, Word documents or PowerPoint. Uh, we also get a like, little graphic right here. And um, then also in terms of the measurements, we can see kind of all the measurement settings when the measurements were collected what uh, receiver types, what's the sweep range, uh, sweep time, and uh, what the audio uh, settings were in. So this, uh, let's see, uh, maybe one last thing to, to mention here. We have a export in uh, B format impulse response, so a normalized export. So any of these audio files uh, can be exported out in a B format impulse response. and. Um, also here, one of the changes in version I 1.1 is kind of we can set one of these locations as a reference location. So all of the other locations will basically be referred to that one. So in terms of like the time references will be uh, kind of like, uh, re relative to this one measurement location. So we have then a relative uh, uh, difference between the receivers in terms of the, the time delays in terms of the impulse response. Uh, maybe a few things in terms of the measurements, uh, sweep settings. So here we can set up the sweep time, and then also the impulse response that it's, uh, as it measures it. Then there are other advanced settings in terms of like start and end frequencies, right? And then in terms of audio settings, uh, in this case, I have no device selected. Uh, because I'm not connected to any audio device, but this is where we select uh, the microphone, um, the uh, calibration of that microphone, and uh, the source, and uh, yeah, the source channel. That completes or ends my uh, introduction into the IRIS uh, software or visualization system, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, contact me. Thank you for listening and uh, have a great day.